a Christian world religion's love sex guide introduction. Every religion, tribe, and culture has its own ideas on sex, love, weddings, marriage and family. Religious people are looking for love and sex information like Christian adults and youth Religious people of other faiths Interfaith relationships, people from different religions marrying Divorced people remarrying Tantrics and Taoists, people who see sex and love as spirit Many people get their ideas of love and sex from the way they were brought up in their religion and slash or culture. Often the two are related. I was brought up a Polish Catholic in Canada. We were raised to work hard, drink hard, eat whatever we wanted, get married and have kids. Even though I now consider myself free with nobody's culture or religion except for my own as an individual, a person's upbringing is a lot of history that most people never break away from so I'm still Catholic by default because that's the way I was brought up and there are no other beliefs inside of me besides that. There are wedding and marriage customs for almost all religions and cultures. There are dating websites for Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, Sikhs, etc. People from the past wrote love and sex books one of which is a part of this book, the Hindu Kama Sutra. Nothing much has changed in dating, love and sex in the past 2500 years based on what I've read which includes Solomon's Song of Songs in the Torah which is also the Christian Old Testament and Ovid's Art of Love written 2000 years ago by a Greek guy who became a Roman senator then was banished to an island for speaking his mind. Every religion has their own customs about who to marry, within the faith or not, how to marry, arranged marriages still exist specific wedding traditions and how to live a married life, mostly whether the woman is equal or subservient to the man. There are many love, sex, and marriage customs among the different religions and cultures of the world like Christian Muslim Jewish Hindu Buddhist Sikh I cover Christian love, marriage, wedding, sex, and family. I cover young Christian issues dealing with love and sex. I cover the sex, love, and marriage customs for the major religions like Islam, Jewish, Buddhist, Hindu and Sikh. Some religions are exotic and erotic like the Hindu religion with its love guide from the past called the Kama Sutra. Most religions forbid gay sex except for the Hindus who tolerate their feminine men as third gender people called Sanskti who put curses on people unless they give them money based on a documentary I saw, and dot Wikipedia Hinduism underscore and underscore LGBT underscore topics. Some guy said he went to Dubai. He took a walk on the beach one night and saw a bunch of Arab men there on the down low looking for gay sex. Governments and cultures can't fight nature no matter what they do. Many videos about love and sex customs have been scrubbed from the internet. The website Best Gore is gone. I've seen videos of women being stoned to death supposedly for adultery. They have female genital mutilation slash FGM where they cut a girl's clitoris off which is the part of her genitals with the most pleasure cells. In some cultures, they go to neighboring towns and kidnap women in a semi-playful way who are then married to a stranger. I went to Catholic schools. They were many nice young women there with the same faith as me but religion can't really help anyone in matters of love and sex or at least it shouldn't. I had to explore love and sex on my own as a single guy starting out in the military in a secular world. I've seen several documentaries that were made in the UK with young modern westernized East Indian and Muslim people. It doesn't work except with somebody desperate who gets a wife from the old country or some religious girl in the west who finds a pious guy but there aren't many religious males left following the old way. I saw an Arab western guy get a Muslim wife from the old country. She was basically his maid but her life was better than in a poor country. If she smartened up, she would probably go to school, learn English then leave him like many of those male order brides do who come to a western country. They figure out the culture, get a skill, legal papers then leave. Religion can't really help you in matters of love but Christian Mingle is a massive dating website. Attraction is supposed to be primal and free-spirited. I wonder how many fakes or wolves in sheep's clothing are on the religious dating websites. The Bible says. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. 
2 Corinthians 6:14. If you plan to practice your faith, don't marry a non-believer and hope you'll convert him or her. Chances are it won't happen. People generally are what they are. I listen to many of the Unshackled stories at Unshackled.org and on YouTube. When a non-believer marries a believer, chances are there will be a clash. Most societies push people to family and marriage. Some approve of polygamy. Customs are geared to control people. After all, every man is a deprived slut in the privacy of his mind by nature. Religion controls us but we are who we are by nature. I remember the promise keepers having a big ministry to help men abstain from porn addictions. Some Eastern philosophies like Tantra and Tao believe in love as the universal life flow but they also believe that release of sperm saps the chi or life energy which seems counterintuitive to me. They say if you're pure and free, sexual and loving energy will flow out of you naturally and vitally. The Hindu Indians have erotic drawings on some of their temple walls in India. When Europeans came, they thought this was sacrilegious. It's hard to have love and sex at the same time because when you're doing sex, you're primal and animalistic. You can't really sugarcoat it. How do you have sex in a loving way? That's the big contradiction we live by. Andrea Dworkin, a lesbian feminist called all sexual intercourse a violent attack on a woman. Most erotic exotic ideas are about tapping into some sense of universal life force while religions try to control people in love and sex, pushing them into monogamy and family life. Muslims and Chinese allow up to four wives. All wedding customs are all a little bit different. I cover the courtship, wedding, marriage, love, and sex customs and ideas for the main world religions. There is your individual purity and the customs you are brought up to believe in. Decide who you'll be. I include some old public domain love sex books from the past. No religion or culture encourages being single or promiscuous. Plenty of cultures talk about polygamy, someone having several spouses. Before the age of AIDS which hit around 1985, promiscuity was getting so big that there were huge swingers clubs around like Plato's retreat in New York City. Somebody said they were having sex on the floor at the disco studio 54. At least one owner's died of AIDS. I saw a disco documentary. I think the other owner is still alive. Monogamy is not natural, at least not for men. Cultures worldwide have been pushing people to get married forever. Some people don't want to be in an intimate relationships for one reason or another. Some people don't want to be intimate with anyone else. Some people think other people suck. Some people don't trust people or like sex. What if you just want to have sex like a Viking? No relationship involved, just sex. What if there is nobody you really like in your community? You're supposed to settle for some slob because your religious culture says you should be married. Imagine some backward people somewhere. You live in that town. You know they're all backward. You're supposed to marry one of them because of your religious culture. What about gay or other different people? MTV's TV show Catfish did a show on a transgender gay girl in Turkey. She's got nobody to relate to in that place. After everything I've seen in the past and in many cultures about love and sex, barely any of them say leave people alone as individuals. If they want sex, they can have casual sex, masturbate or pay for it. Everywhere there is a pressure to couple up in order to be complete according to the world religions. I've watched hundreds of true life crime shows. A major element is that many people cannot be happy alone. They get into relationships that prove to be destructive because of that common thread among humanity. The idea is I don't want to be alone even if it means being with a negative person. Don't leap too quickly when falling in love. It always wears off.